people think we already have the ERA. And that's also what a more formal poll found, that more than 70% of Americans think that the ERA passed and is in the Constitution. So on the one hand, there's a kind of complacency and a sense that we're making progress. And on the other hand, we all know from these facts and figures and from our own lives that women still do not have equality. For the most part, we have to address is how an ERA could help us make more progress, why we need it, and what it could do. And that's why I wrote this book, Equal Means Equal. So, was that the legal framework that we have right now is just simply not enough. It's not working for women who suffer gender-based injustice. But we have to remember that the 14th Amendment was passed in the 1860s, and that it was only 50 years later, and as a result of another amendment, not the 14th Amendment, but the 19th Amendment ratified in 1920, that women got the right to vote. And it was right after that, in 1923, that Alice Paul drafted the ERA to be sure that women got all rights, not just the right to vote. So clearly the 14th Amendment was not working if women were unable to use it to get even the simple right to vote. Justice Antonin Scalia, who said publicly, clearly the Constitution does not require discrimination against women. The only question is whether it prohibits it. It doesn't. There are also some clear loopholes. And the biggest one, perhaps, is an exception for what they call factors other than sex that allow for unequal pay for equal work when you have these factors. And one of these factors that has been upheld by the courts as a factor other than sex is how much you got paid in your last job. So in 1982, Lola Cuba lost a case that she had brought against Allstate Insurance Company where her guaranteed starting minimum salary was $825 a week, while her male colleagues doing the exact same job had a guaranteed starting minimum salary of $1,000 a week. And Allstate, in that case, argued successfully that it was okay to pay Cuba less because she had been earning less in her prior job than her male colleagues had earned in their prior jobs. And the court found that this was a factor other than sex, which fit into the exception to the Equal Pay Act. The Supreme Court has held that pregnancy discrimination does not constitute sex discrimination, even though only women can get pregnant. <laughs> a pregnant woman was treated differently from a pregnant man, that would be sex discrimination. <laughs> the, co the company, UPS, had a policy that gave drivers convicted of drunk driving a right to be assigned, a right to be assigned alternative work while their license was suspended. But Peggy Young was required to stop working because her doctor said that she should not lift more than 20 pounds, and UPS refused to reassign her temporarily to another job that did not require heavy lifting. So if you get drunk, you're protected. But if you get pregnant, you're out. As you may know, the United States is one of the few countries in the world that never ratified CEDAW, which is also known as the International Bill of Rights for Women. The only other countries in the world that have not ratified CEDAW together with the United States are Iran, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, Palau, and Tonga. So those last two are little Pacific Island states. Provides that states should have a sex equality provision in their constitutions. So without CEDAW and without the ERA, we are missing the legal framework for women's rights that almost all other countries have. And for ERA came very, very close to ratification. After it passed Congress in 1972, and before the deadline expired, it had been ratified by 35 out of the 38 states needed to put the amendment in the Constitution.